In this video, I'm going to cover the, the correlated double sampling uh, in a little more quantitative deta detail and, and show you how you do, in fact, improve your noise performance by differencing uh, signal 1 from signal 2, sample 1 from sample 2. Let me scroll down and, and do that. I'm going to scroll down to a new area. What do we get for sample 1 in terms of the, sig in terms of the net signal, uh, the signal that we get? We're going to see Q reset. This is in terms of, remember, the input referred electrons. So the electrons piling up here, I'm going to talk about everything in terms of input referred electrons. I'm going to refer everything to this node. Okay. We measure the the reset noise, the 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 uh, the the well, whatever whatever charge is sitting there from the reset operation, and in addition to that, we have plus the Q1 read noise. This is mostly determined by thermal noise uh, from the sampling circuitry or anything else in the system. There's going to be some read noise associated with that, and that's random, uh, and it's just there. That's what it is. I'm not going to include quantization noise or any other noise sources just to keep the discussion a little simpler, but they could feed in somehow at this point too. And Q1 read noise, um, uh, it's it's just going to be some some value, some random value. Uh, it can't be more quantitative than, about it than that at this point. Let's uh, say we have signal 2, sample 2. Oh, and one thing I want to note is that T1 was the time at which this was done and uh, sorry, uh, T1 was the time at which this one operation was done and T0 was the time at which this operation was done and the difference of those two is your integration time, T int. Uh, and that becomes important for writing out the signal that we measure from sample 2 because we have the photo current plus the dark current times T int. This is the roughly speaking, the signal electrons that we're going to see. Associated with that, and this is a more confusing topic, there's going to be shot noise associated with the photon, photocurrent plus shot noise associated with the dark current. And I'm going to pause here. There's more to this, more to this expression, but I want to note that uh, this in total would be our three electrons from the previous discussion. This would be uh, the the shot noise would be the square root of the two electrons and this would be the square root of the one electron and this is a concept from physics it has to do with the random arrival of photons at your surface they follow a Poisson distribution so let's say we had a pixel or an array of pixels a bunch of pixels a bunch of pixels and the way light would strike it you usually draw it as a continuous wave coming in but actually it's we get a different color it's a bunch of discrete hits of photons around the detector. That's one way you can think about it. And the distribution of those photons will follow the, the, uh, uh, the constraints of the mean, the, the, well, the signal equals the noise squared. And that's what's true for a Poisson distribution. Uh, when you are well, I don't want to get into that part yet, but know it's there, and uh, that's another discussion. Let's see. We have, continuing on, the other things we're going to see in sample two. We're going to see Q reset, which is exactly the same reset as we had up here, and then plus Q2 read noise. This is completely uncorrelated from this guy. There are two separate things um, resulting from thermal noise in your sampling circuitry, uh, and they aren't going to subtract out when we do our operation. But let's go ahead and do our operation. Let me scroll down a little bit. Let's do sample 2 minus sample 1. What do we get? Let me just write out some of it. I pH the photocurrent plus I sub DC times T int. I'm going to lump the shot noise sources together as Q shot total plus Q reset from the second operation minus Q reset from the first operation plus Q2 read minus Q1 read. 
And let's take a look at this expression. What do we see? Well, these quantities are the same. They're going to be the same from sample to sample, so this goes to zero. These quantities are decoupled from each other, so the noise power will double, and we may have something like square root 2 times the Q read, the average read noise that we're going to see, maybe something like that, or maybe something a little different. I think that's supposed to be what it is. But in any case, it's not zero. And then we can write our expression again. So the photocurrent plus IDC, Tint plus Q shot, total plus zero plus some factor times Q read. And you can see, and this, this alpha here is, is going to be greater than one, and I think it is root two, but it's definitely greater than one. And so what have we done? We've effectively eliminated Q reset while increasing our read noise. And if it is true that the reset noise was much greater than the read noise, which is usually true, this was an excellent trade. Uh, we've lowered the total noise of our, of our sampling chain. Uh, now, what if we were to take multiple samples of the read, of, of the, uh, do our read operation multiple times where, uh, from my previous videos, uh, I showed that you could, in principle, lower the read noise. Well, let's say we could somehow lower this read noise. Maybe we were cooling all of our electronics or multiple samples integrating a capacitor or whatever. Let's say that was zero. So nothing out here matters. And what we're left with is this. And let me scroll down. This is a very interesting result because if you can get to this point, uh, that means your shot noise limited. Shot noise limited. Limited. Or some people will say blip. Background limited. Background limited. This is the best a sensor can do. This is a physical limit of any kind of sensor system. You have the signal that you're interested in, um, and you have the shot noise associated with that signal. Uh, if you can get a very high signal level where your illumination and the carriers generated from that are much higher than the background of your the background noise of your sa sampling system, you will be shot noise limited. And the more signal you get, the better your signal to noise ratio will be. Uh, and uh, this is a very nice place to be, and the ideal for any sensor system. You're never going to get there in practice, there's always a trade-off, but uh, if you can get to the shot noise limited response, that's where you want to be. Let me make one quick note. Um, this is an aside. aside. And if you uh, don't want to follow this, that's fine. Uh, what would our, if we were shot noise limited, what would our signal be? Well, our signal would be, let's just say S electrons. What would our noise be? Well, our noise would be uh, it would be the square root of the signal, which is a signal on electrons. So this is also an electron, so that's where it gets confusing. The noise would be the square root of the signal because it's Poisson, a Poisson distribution. So our signal to noise ratio equals the signal over the square root of the signal equals the square root of the signal. So if your background limited, if your shot noise limited, you, as you increase your signal level, your signal-to-noise ratio will go up as the square root of your signal.